Hi there, period three. Let's take a few minutes and see if we can wrap up and tie together a few ideas around the sample standard deviation. So to review, where we left off, we had calculated deviations, x minus x bar or x minus the mean. Those are the deviations. We calculated those deviations in list two. Those were our deviations. So that the negatives and positives don't cancel one another out, we squared those deviations. Those squared values were in list three. Now, our goal was to find, in some sense, an average of the squared deviations from the mean. So, fair enough, from the home screen, from the home screen, I want to take the sum of list three. So to get the sum of list three, I can press the second button. Then I can press the stat button. Right arrow twice over to the math menu. And option number five is the sum. So I'm going to select not option number five and bring it to the home screen. I'm going to call up list three, second three. Close my parentheses. So, but something to think about, before I complete this command, in order to find an average, I need to divide. Well, normally we would divide by the number of observations, and there are 32 squared deviations from the mean. But remember, from class, not all of those deviations are free to vary. So the first 31 observations were free to vary. But in class, we looked very specifically at the 32nd observation was not free to vary. So Normally, when you're calculating then the average of the squares of the deviations from the mean, we're not going to divide by the total sample size. So using our NFL data, we are not going to divide by 32. Instead, we are going to divide by one less than that. We are going to divide by 31. That's the degrees of freedom. That's the number of observations that are free to vary. So if I divide by 31, I get 90.867. That is the sample variance. 90.867. But the units are squared points. Points squared. So that's a problem. That's a problem because I'm not interested in squared points. I'd really rather have plain points. That's a whole lot easier to interpret. And that's why instead of focusing on the sample variance, we focus on what's called the sample standard deviation. Notice it's not called the average deviation because it's really not a true average. I didn't divide by n. I divided by the degrees of freedom, n minus 1. Hey, and notice, in class I made a mistake with what I wrote on the board. That's not a deviation. It needs to be x minus x bar. Deviation squared. I took the sum and divided by n minus 1. That's the sample variance. When I take the square root of it, notice what I'm going to do then. Literally, I'm taking the square root of the 90.867 points squared. So the result is, instead of squared points, I'm going to get plain points. That's exactly what I want. So on the calculator, if you want to take the square root of that answer, notice the square root is above the squaring button. Here's the squaring button. The square root symbol is above it. So we'll press the second button and the squaring button. That brings up the square rooting option. And then to bring up our previous answer, notice that above the negative sign, you see ANS for answer. If you press second and then the negative sign under the three, that will bring up your pre previous answer. Close the parentheses. And now finally, there we are at 9.5. 9.5 points. That is the sample standard deviation. So something important that we need to describe then is what is that exactly? So let's go look at the histogram. So my original NFL data, they are in list one. So I want to look at a histogram. My plot one is on. I'm using the histogram option out of list one. Here is the window that we were using in class, using a minimum of zero, a maximum of 52, a scale of four. The Y minimum is negative two. The maximum is eight. The scale is one. So here is my histogram. Now, if I trace this, 
the mean and the median are both in this bar right here. This bar represents NFL teams that scored starting at 20 points, but less than 24 points. So this includes scores of 20, 21, 22, and 23. I guess technically, since both the median and the average were just slightly above 23, technically this is the bar in which the mean and the median will sit. Either way, it's pretty much right here in the middle of the peak. So what I want you to see, a sample standard deviation of 9.5 means that a typical NFL team is going to score within 9.5 points of the mean. Now that could be 9.5 points above or below the mean. So let's say that right in between these two bars is the mean or the median. It's pretty close to that. Each bar represents a, has a scale of four. That's our scale, X scale of four. That means each bar captures four scores. So if I'm interested in going 9.5 points above and below the mean, I'm looking at four, eight, nine. Right here would be nine points, if you will, nine and a half points above the mean. So again, if I consider this the mean, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and a half points below the mean will be right about here. So using a sample standard deviation of 9.5, what this says is that a typical NFL team is going to score around nine and a half points above or below the mean. These are the typical scores. Scores that are a little more unusual then would be outside of that span, such as for instance, this outlier, that's the Denver Broncos at 49 points, or this point right here, this observation is the Jaguars at two. So officially then, here's the way I like to write about it. So the standard deviation, or in this case, the sample standard deviation So the sample standard deviation, which we will call lowercase s, it represents on average, it represents on average how far away from the mean. the mean is represented again with x bar. On average, how far away from the mean a typical observation tends to be? I'll put typical in quotes, a typical observation tends to be. This is kind of the intuitive way in which I like to think about what we mean by the sample standard deviation. So one last thing to consider then, you've been calculating it all along, you didn't realize it. So if you go back to the home screen, the sample standard deviation was about 9.53. I'll clear the home screen. When you run the one variable statistics on a list, you get the sample standard deviation automatically. So our NFL data is in list one. I'm gonna press the stat button and the calc button. I'm gonna run one variable statistics on my list one. So notice here's the mean of the NFL scores. And right here is the sample standard deviation. It's called S in your calculator, 9.53, just like we calculated. Of course, we went through all the steps by hand because I want you to understand what the different parts of the formula mean as we're developing this idea of standard deviation. So you don't have to go through all of these list manipulations by hand. You get that sample standard deviation just by running the one variable statistics. So that's really, really convenient. Something to think about though, that sample standard deviation is actually calculated using the mean. The mean is not resistant to outliers, so neither is